how to make a TTF slingshot. So I started out with a sheet of paper and a pencil, jotting a bunch of ideas down. I eventually went to a wooden frame that I made last summer. I then gelled that together with a bunch of other frames that I enjoy shooting, and I came up with this. I then cut, out, cut it out with a pair of scissors, and then I use a glue stick to adhere it to a sheet of aluminum, and I trace around it with a sharp paper pen because the paper template tends to fall off once it's heated up with the drill press, which is the next step here. I use a drill press to go around the entire circumference of the paper template. So I use the drill press and I go around the entire circumference of the paper template through the aluminum, about a millimeter or two apart from each hole, leaving me a bit of debris in between each hole. Now I could use a bandsaw, a jigsaw, or a hacksaw, but I end up using snips and a pair of pliers for this next part. So I snip in between each and every hole and then remove it with the pliers. I definitely advise wearing gloves for this as it's very sharp. It's then ready to be filed as I have a jagged template that needs filing. So I follow file I, so I start to file around the entire template until it's extremely smooth and I am then able to handle it. I then have a template that needs scales. So for this one I chose some blue G10. I use the same paper template to make two to trace two scales on the blue G10 then cutting it out with a bandsaw. I then use a hand drill to drill divot holes into the templates, the scales. However, you don't have to do that. I just did that out of habit and continue to do it. You can use sandpaper. I then epoxy the one of the scales onto the aluminum. And once that's dry, I remove the clamps. I then drill through a hole through the aluminum core into the scale. And then I'm ready to scale the other side. Now, I only did it this way because time was permitting, so I would have normally done it all together, but I then clamp it and unclamp it. You can use a vise if you have one. And then I pre, I drilled the holes through the pre-drilled holes. I was already on the uh, slingshot frame there. once that's done I start to sand it now if you're gonna make a lot of slingshots and oscillating orbital sander is the way to go this thing is a slingshot makers dream I just love it I love it it's a very handy tool to have I then Use a tube, put a tube into the handle with a two-part epoxy, and then I glued on a scrap piece of G10 for a palm swell. And made sure that it all fit nice and neat on the slingshot. And then I start to cut off the extra part of the palm swell. I sanded it to fit the slingshot frame itself and then it was ready to be shaped and cleaned up. I then decided to put a second pin there in the, uh, in the palm swell. After which, about eight hours of curing time, because it wasn't fully cured, I decided to remove it with another pin and a hammer which is what you see me doing here. Now you don't have to do it this way either. If I knew the, the frame that I wanted right from the beginning and hadn't been changing my mind throughout it, it would have already been done at this point, but I like to challenge myself. Once that's done, I re-drill the hole in the palm swell, cut off the extra pins and make some band grooves. I then get some tube hole placements in the forks ready as well.
Here I am prepping a tube for the slingshot frame and once they're all cut, okay, I use a two-part epoxy and after 24 hours, they are ready to uh, be sanded down a final time. So here it is, I finished it off with some hand sanding. I went from 200, 220 grit to 600 grit. And then I was able to see all the scratches and then I went from 220 grit all the way up to 2000 grit. I then used the only buffer that I had and then it was finished.